Mechatronic Arm Exoskeleton, A2 Systems and Control Project, candidate number 7178, Sam Parks. So in this video I'm going to assemble the arm. Uh, these are all the parts for it. So this is the upper arm lower assembly part. This is the actuation base. Uh, this is the lower arm bar. These are the uh, lower arm fixing parts. These are internal actuator parts. This fixes the lower arm pivot to the uh, lower arm bar. This is a pivot actuator. This is an actuator pin. This is an actuator bar. And this is the lower elbow pivot. And then there's my PCB with my Arduino micro on it. My two modified uh, servos which have slide potentiometers instead of uh, rotational potentiometers. I've got a battery, I've got some velcro straps, I've got a GT2 timing belt which fits on these GT2 16 tooth pulleys and I've got my 4.7k rotational potentiometer. So I'm going to assemble this now uh, and I'm going to speed up the video. A bit. Okay, so now these pieces slide on to uh, to the lower arm bar. Um, they've got the same same shape. You can you can see that, and these just slide right onto it, and they're really nicely fitting. And then that's the lower arm 3D printed parts assembled. So now I can put together this part and this part to create the base of the arm and that that shows you how it's going to work eventually which is quite nice move that for a second so the next thing I'm going to assemble is the actuator one thing I'd like to point out is this corner support broke off that's right here That uh, that's due to a weak design uh, with no support underneath it as you can see unlike this middle bit here which has been designed so there's some horizontal support because obviously it's a 3D printed uh, piece it builds in layers so the lateral connections aren't as strong as the vertical connections much like a tree um, so I'm just going to assemble this Okay, so now you can see that I have screwed in the slide potentiometers uh, and they move collectively together eventually. Um, but this was designed on SolidWorks and then exported and printed. It's a really nice piece actually. Um, quite surprised it only took three hours to print. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is mount these servos in place where you saw them before, so that's not going to take too long.
that's one done. It's pretty rigid in its uh, its mounts. There's no there's no real movement in it. Bit of flexion for a mechanical give, which is nice. I'm going to go mount the other one now. So I left these two screws off, uh, two bolts off here even, uh, because because this bit broke off. Um, so that's the main uh, servos attached. I can uh, I can tidy up this cable a bit, I reckon. But apart from that, it's pretty much uh, pretty much all done almost. So the next bit I'm going to put in is this this part here, which has already been pre-filled with blue tack, and this is the belt clamp which attaches to the bar and the belt to give the bar actuation motion. So there you can see the whole whole thing slides now, which is kind of nice. Um, but first, I need to get the GT2 timing belt. This is it mostly assembled, this is the dual servo actuator. Um, an issue I have with this design is I've got no belt tensioning ability apart from pulling them through this uh, this loop, which is not ideal really, um, and I'd like to redesign it but I don't have the time left to do that, so that would be a future upgrade. Okay, so I've got the belt tensioned, um, that's, actually, that's actually quite a quite a tight belt now, it's not got much movement at all um, and I'm gonna just slip this bar right in the end of here and that sits snugly in the hole in there which, uh, if I can get it to fit, there we go uh, and that is now ready uh, to go on to the rest of the project okay so before I do the next part of the assembly I'm going to stick all my velcro straps in. So uh, these are these are really simple actually, and they just slot in through here. I made slots in the side of there. They go straight into there. Okay, so the next bit is the actuation bar, and that simply pops into this well designed circle as you can see like so it's got the bar hole at the end and then this this part sits on the end of this part like that okay so now we can assemble it this part goes here and then this and you can see there's a bearing in the end there all slots together like that this goes on there and we're almost done so I'm using cable ties to attach the actuator to the upper arm pivot uh, because I couldn't find any M3 threaded bar right available right now so I'm going to use cable ties the final product will have uh, M3 threaded bar through these holes here. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my PCB which I've designed, plug in this And there are my servos. They plug right into there with the negative on the negative side. And that is the whole arm in its entirety. I'm going to cut this recording now and I'm going to breadboard this because the wires just snapped. And I'm going to show you it working in, in person. Okay, so what I've done here, I have replaced 
my uh, 4.7k potentiometer, which I wired up because this this wire has come out of the header. It focuses. There we go. Um, so I've breadboarded another one up to the same connection. Uh, what you can hear at the moment is the servos, they uh, hum a bit when they're not uh, in the perfect position. But as you can see, if I push this one way, it fights against it. Um, same the other way. Uh, so that's what they're doing at the moment. Um, and that is the full range of motion at the moment because I didn't foresee that this pivot point here was going to be too far away from there to give a, a, a wide enough range of angles because that's not going to help anyone uh, with their aid. So another revision of this would be to put the pivot closer to the uh, to the actual pivot which is right here. I don't know if you can see that, it's pretty black. Um, so I'm going to simulate that with some blue tack and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I've put the blue tack pivot in there to show a future improvement, which I could just reprint this part with a shorter bar on the end. And this gives us the full 90 degrees of movement in my specification, which is required for my final prototype. So there it is. That's my project. I'm going to follow this with a video of this working on a human arm, lifting the full weight without any issue. Just one issue that I'd like to demonstrate. If uh, the user turned the uh, control potentiometer past zero point too many times, it resets the Arduino and because one of the servos is attached to pin 13 which is the same as the flashing light for the reset on the Arduino it uh, it skips like this so I'm not touching anything so a future improvement would be to remove that from pin 13 and change it to another PWM pin okay. so this is the Mechatronic arm exoskeleton test, and I can oppose that with a bit of, and it actually flexes the PLA push bar. So, an improvement for that would be to have a steel bar instead of a PLA printed bar. I don't have access to a steel bar at the time of making this, um, so I just printed one. And um, as you can see, this works pretty effectively. Obviously with the improvement of the pivot here, instead of right at the end there, this would mean my arm would be able to go all the way through the 90 degrees and then this would become a useful functional uh, tool for, say, rehabilitation. Um, but at the moment it's still a prototype, but I'm quite happy that the actuator works and it can lift my arm. I'd also like to point out the entire thing is made from 3D printed parts or electronics parts and bolts, M3 bolts. Uh, so all of it's made of PLA, so it's extremely light and really strong. So for instance, here on my arm, there's uh, a strong shape structure there, which I've used to just hold my two blocks on. I'd right, like to redesign that as a more ergonomic part. But for that, with dual servo actuation is working really well and I'm really happy with that. So this is the second test with the blue tack pivot at the short pivot distance to show that this would work giving you a 90 degree travel of action. So if I can do that and there we go and that's fully extended it's 
got me the 90 degrees that I need, or almost 90 degrees. And hopefully, there we go. That gives me my full travel.